Well, definitely more favorable conditions on this uh, Sunday morning. The wind has died down, cooler weather um, persists across the garden route, making it um, a great weather for those helicopters to be able to go up into the sky and water bomb as much of this vegetation and fires that we see across the garden route this morning. Since very early this morning, um, quite a number of them have taken to the sky. We counted at least about five choppers in the air. Those, about three of them, SANDF, um, RX helicopters, as well as they're working on fire chopper as well, actually working around the clock to try and bring some sort of moisture um, into the ground. A statement released from disaster management not too long ago also attributing um, these favorable co weather conditions along the garden route, giving them some sort of chance to try and see how much of, this, of these flames they can actually um, quell. They are, of course, saying that there are still some concerns, and those concerns are at, um, at Rienendal and Witlokasi, where there's still some um, fires burning in that particular region. They've also got um, fire trucks and fire engines on the ground to try and sort out uh, that particular issue. Then um, Brenton on Sea, which was hardest hit yesterday, um, they are saying that those are, that is the area where most houses got damaged during um, the flare-ups um, on Saturday. And then they say that the wind conditions are dropping, so they're hoping for the best going into um, the Sunday. Jody, we know that uh, the flare-ups and windy conditions have been deadly. What do you know about the latest death toll in this regard? Umpo, I don't want to speculate at this stage because we're trying to put out a couple of calls to, to just try and ascertain the exact number of fatalities within this area. According to disaster management in the Western Cape, the number stands at six. And that includes um, the latest fatality of the firefighter that died in the Neisner area. However, this contradicts some other reports that we are receiving from local authorities within this particular region. So at this stage, we don't want to speculate until we actually have that official number corroborated by all these agencies, emergency services, disaster management officials working across this garden route. We know that this fire is stretching more than 100 kilometers now, all the way um, from, from George, all the way down, almost into Port Elizabeth. So there's a lot of different towns, lots of different municipalities, even though there's an overarching disaster management team in the Western Cape that's dealing with it. So we really want to try and corroborate those numbers um, and I don't want to speculate at this stage exactly how many lives this fire has claimed um, in the last four days. We also know, Jody, that uh, the um, evacuations have been happening throughout uh, the week since these flare-ups began. Do we know if uh, there were any residents who were evacuated last night, overnight perhaps? No evacuations to place overnight, so that's, that's sort of good news, if you, if you can say it um, that way, um, given the, the, the favorable weather conditions in this particular area. Brenton at Sea was a concern yesterday. People, some people could return back to their houses. Buffels Bay or Buffels Bay, as, as, as some people call it, also was a concern yesterday. We are told by officials now that the fire there um, has died down considerably, so, so people could move back um, to their homes in, in that Buffalo's Bay area. But um, Witlokasi still remains a big concern for authorities. There haven't been mass evacuations in that particular area yet. They're doing assessments this morning, and we're hoping to get um, a, an update in, by mid-morning to just tell us exactly what the status is right now in terms of evacuations. Suffice to say, though, that there haven't been any evacuations overnight, even though there are about three to 4,000 people that are still being housed in church halls, sports facilities, um, and community halls across this garden route. Those are people whose houses have been burnt to cinders. Thank you so much for that update. That's our reporter Jody Jacobs in Neisner giving us the latest developments on those wildfires. We'll continue to catch up with him throughout the day.